In this episode, we cruise along the southern Spanish coast. I don't think either of us really appreciated how beautiful this country is. I'm so glad we took the time to visit some of the coastal villages which we could have otherwise sailed straight past in our eagerness to get to the Balearics. Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other way Oh, <laughs> look how blue it is. Not through there? Yeah. It's not funny in the slightest, no, right? You're pointing at me. You can, you can get a grip with a camera. I have got a grip with it. I'm gripping it very hard. I should be gripping one. you. <laughs> oh, I've made a seat. <laughs> you're fat. Yeah. That's definitely very, very blue. Beautiful blue. watched our previous episode, we all know that our loose plan is to travel along the southern coast of Spain, hop over to the Balearics, spend a couple of months in the Balearics, and then go over to Corsica and Sardinia before we winter up in Sicily. Well, we've just arrived at Ensenada de los Barangueles. I think that's how you say it. And it's a little tiny anchorage tucked around the corner. It's gusting um, 37, 38 knots out there at the moment. So we thought we'd come and tuck in around here for the evening, for the night. And it's stunning, as you can see. We had another excellent sail today and then we had to motor for the last half an hour um, because even though it was really really um, swelly out there there wasn't really a great deal of wind and then it got wild although we did know that it was going to they did forecast um, light gales they said light gales being 36 37 knots so that's why we opted to come in here for the evening and we may stay here for a couple of days we don't know yet face mask whilst he's fishing. The scenery along the southern coast of Spain is absolutely stunning and if you get a chance to see it whilst you're sailing along then you need to stop in some of the anchorages and the little fishing villages. We use an app called Navali on our phones which helps us to decide which anchorage or marina we're going to go into. On this occasion we chose Roquetas de Mar
so we're just leaving Roquetas de Mar, lovely little town. Um, strangely, Navali didn't really give it a brilliant light up, but we found it absolutely fine. A little bit rolly, uh, but not enough that it would necessarily keep you awake. Unless, of course, it was really up, really rough, and it hasn't been. The town's got plenty of supermarkets, really nice supermarkets as well, and plenty of laundrettes. So, um, and all within five minutes walking once you're on land. There's a little tiny marina here and, uh, for bigger boats, and then there is a fishing village marina. You ready to go? Okay.
We're just going past Cabo de Gata Lighthouse. We're on our way to a little bay called Genovesis. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> we always have to look them up. And really strange because just over there, I don't know whether you can see it. Just over there, that there is a, an enormous piece of white rock. So we've arrived at Playa de los Genovesis and it's a lovely anchorage, beautiful anchorage. We had to motor sail most of today, it's not very much wind at all. We had about an hour, maybe a couple, maybe a couple of hours of wind. Apparently there are some lovely walks around here. I'm not sure how long we'll be here. But it's certainly beautiful. I'm wondering whether this machine will pick up the colour of the water. We're in 50 metres of water off the coast of Spain heading up towards Cartagena. There's not enough wind. We're motor sailing and I think we're creating more than there is. But the colour of the water is just Amazingly blue. No jellyfish today. We saw lots of jellyfish yesterday. It's so calm today that we're having to actually motor along. But what's fantastic is that the water is so blue, but like glass, so the reflection going along in the water is not just it's like a coloured effect it's like looking in a mirror it's amazing just left Calabardina. I think it's Calabardina. Yeah. Um, well we anchored overnight. It was very calm and lovely and we had an excellent night's sleep because the previous place 55 miles down the coast which was something Genovese's we just rolled like a pig all night. I can sleep through 99.9% .9 of everything but I could not sleep through that, which is very unusual. So um, we got up the early, well, I can't say we, we got out of bed, we weren't asleep, and um, left and came to this place. We, we were gonna try and go to Mazaron in one hit, but there wasn't a lot of wind, if at all. Um, so we broke it up by stopping off, stopping, stopping off at Calabri. Oh, Calabrini, <laughs> Calabardina, however you pronounce it, and um, I'm glad we did because it was a beautiful little place. We were the only yacht there, um, quite a tight anchorage. We were in about six meters of water, which was as clear, you could see straight down to the bottom. And we went ashore and had a cup of coffee, well, had a beer and a cup of coffee this morning, which was really nice. And it was just a very pretty little place. I could, I could quite easily live and there. And very, very calm it's all night. It's now joined the list of a hundred places that we've seen where we go, well, we could live there. We could do we get rid of this boating lot. We could live there. And anyway, so we're now on the way to Mazaron. Mazaron, which is a little bit near 
to Cartagena, but um, a little bit near to. Well, I don't know. <laughs> what kind of English is that? It's a little bit near it's... to. We're parking up here for the night, uh, maybe two nights, we don't know yet. Uh, we are only two or three miles from Mazaron and um, because of the weather we've come over here, the winds, we just don't want another bad night. We had a good night last night but uh, this would be the best place for us tonight. It looks quite pretty and as you can see there are a few other boats here. So I'm sure they're thinking the same as we are. Wow, look at that. As it's quite clear here, and Steve can see the hull of the boat in the water, he's taking this opportunity to start scraping the bottom of it because the boat hasn't been out of the water now for nearly 15 months and the growth is not too bad, just a little bit thicker around the waterline. So we've run out of gas uh, a couple of days ago. We've managed to get by using the generator just to make a cup of tea and we didn't need to cook anything yesterday because it was quite hot. Uh, but we have got to now go and find uh, the place that sells gas, which is in Mazaron. We're in uh, La Zoya. Um, Mazaron is this way. Uh, you're looking at about four, four and a half miles and we're going to go in the dinghy. We did try and go yesterday with the boat but it's very, very swelly over there and um, yeah, just a little bit dangerous we thought to leave the boat. So we're going to go and hook the dinghy up and go and do some shopping and go and find some gas. So we've arrived in Mazaron and we are just going to tie up and leave uh, next to the Zambinka. Zambinka. Where? Oh, I'm surprised it's on. The reason for coming here is that we saw on another YouTube channel, Sailing Fair Isle, that Food Co is a subsidiary or runs alongside Tesco. So we're hoping to get British sausages in there and maybe some of your Earl Grey. Oh dear, you look a bit hot Steve. We forgot our hats. We got gas. We got gas, that's all that matters. We could go without a lot of things, but gas, no. After a one night quick stopover outside the Mar Menor, this ended our fantastic experience of the southern coast of mainland Spain. Join us next time when we explore the Balearic Islands. If you've enjoyed, don't forget to share and subscribe and give us a like. Thank you for watching. We'll be back in two weeks. Bye.